Good morning, people. I got a bit of a story for you. So uh, uh, sit down and uh, take a few minutes to uh, get yourself comfortable. So today's story is about a failed mission to Cape Romano. Cape Romano is one of the lowest islands on the west coast of Florida that is next to an inhabited city, which is Marco Island. So it's not the lowest parts of Florida. There's Everglades below that, but as far as being in an area, I think there's actually some, some condominiums on some of the islands. I don't know the name of all the islands, but it's not so much important. But like I said, Cape Romano is the, is the southernmost part of an island that is just below Marco Island, which is an inhabited, like a, it's kind of a tourist place, whatever you call it, a uh, seasonal type of area. So we had planned, say about two weeks ago, to head down to Marco Island, which is about two, I don't know, two and a half hours south of Sarasota. And uh, fortunately, I did not plan, so there I, therefore I planned to fail because I did not uh, calculate the distance we had to kayak. So immediately it was apparent, like the day before when I went on Google Earth and figured out that it was five miles out to the island chain, that that was probably going to be a bit more than I was uh, going to be able to do. So uh, like I said, I should have I should have researched this weeks ahead of time and had an idea. I researched where the dome homes were and uh, the dome homes were, were where we wanted to like photograph, take video of. So the dome homes, if you've never heard of it, which is probably a good chance that you've never heard of it, were some concrete homes that I think were like 20 feet tall, like uh, multi-level homes. The guy named Bob Lee uh, constructed in 1982. He's considered he was considered to be a an inventor type person, and I believe he was a retired oil guy. And uh, so he decided at some point in the 80s that he would he came up with an idea to purchase this property on Cape the bottom part of Cape Romano, which is basically a very remote island. Like I said, it's south of Marco Island. I guess he wanted some very, he wanted some uh, space to himself. And uh, you know, people, sometimes people do that. So when I say it's an island, it wasn't like it was way off the coast. It was more like in line with the coastline of Florida. Like you can see in the map, it's sort of just south, a southward island. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, what I'm trying to say. So uh, apparently he completed these dome homes in 1982, but I, I also read that he made a prototype in Tennessee, I believe, of the homes first. Like I said, he was a, I think he was a wealthy guy. So he, he designed these homes on a piece of property in Tennessee, I think. And then once he had that design, he bought the property on Cape Romano. The island, I think, has a name, and I can't think of what the name of it is, but... Cape Romano is considered the south part of that island. They call it the Thousand Island, or the Thousand Islands, because there's all these little tiny, tiny islands. So we set off, and I explained to my friend on the map, it's five miles up, five miles back, which I'm not a championship rower. So I think that was part of the issue was we didn't sort that out ahead of time. We just kind of assumed it would, you know, it would be, feasible or so anyway my idea was to get a boat rent a boat it's kind of expensive to get a boat and rent it down there but uh, I was vetoed and uh, for some reason I was in a bit of a mood on the way down there I don't know sometimes when I go on planned trips that you know that uh, I plan ahead of time and I know there's a certain day that I'm gonna do that trip I get some kind of traveler's anxiety or something and my anxiety makes me sort of grumpy and snippy and short-tempered for some reason. Wow, they're doing some construction over there. Look at that big house over there. Interesting. 
so I was a bit grumpy going into it and I, I just had it in my mind that you know I didn't think that we could paddle five miles plus it was what you consider sort of in a uh, rougher current area it wasn't like paddling down a river you know where you had calm water it was a it was probably gonna be considered a lot more wind a lot more current to deal with a lot harder to paddle the wind was against us so I, sh I had I, sh I have some pictures of us getting ready I didn't shoot a lot of video necessarily of us getting ready because it's kind of it's kind of hard to pick up your phone when you're concentrating on trying to get all your gear in the kayaks and launch and it's when I get when I get um, busy doing this I lose track of what I'm doing so therefore it's not good because I bring two or three bags full of stuff I gotta pack it all into a bag to put in my kayak you know safety safety stuff and my uh, life vest and all the important things like one time I forgot my paddle which was like idiotic I mean that's how good I plan so and I don't I don't think Dave and I plan well jointly together or separately I don't think we plan that well so it's like uh, you know usually you have a yin and a yang and I think I think both of us are yangs so we don't uh, plan well kind of pretty out today Nice and calm. Can I see if I can follow you? What? All right. So there's a lady kind of following me back there. I'm not trying to see anything. So she went by. I don't know why she was like lingering back there. So we, yeah, we get down there, we unpack, and um, right away uh, I find out that we have to pay a $2 launching fee for kayaks, which I'm, we're very lucky in Sarasota County. We have a lot of public access boat launching all over the place in Sarasota. They don't charge you for anything, so I guess I should just be lucky that I live somewhere where you don't have to pay for that kind of stuff. But when you go into these smaller cities, I guess they don't have the tax base to do free stuff like that so right away I'm like we, we gotta pay two dollars for launching I think it's two dollars per kayak so my friend that was a woodpecker up in the tree up there my friend Dave paid for the uh, the kayaks and uh, so we get in the water and uh, I measured it out to where it was gonna be three quarters of a mile to the first island I think which you could see by line of sight like if we're looking across here this is probably about two and a half miles like from where we're sitting way over to those buildings across the bay so that's like a, a long uh, a long and the one thing you don't consider when, when you're salt water uh, kayaking is there's, there's a current pushing this way so you're constantly trying to paddle straight as well as fight that current which wants to push you down so I'm an experienced freshwater kayaker uh, that way but not as much salt water so it's kind of a little bit new to me. It's like a little bit of a learning curve. I don't know how much extra effort it's going to take for the wind to fight the wind and fight the current. So it did take a bit of effort because I said we were paddling into the wind. So I shot, I shot a little bit of video. So right now we're on Makatosa Nosa Bay. I have no idea what the bay is called. See Dave way back there? One minute ago he said he was ready to go. But as usual, he's kind of hanging back and uh, not ready to go. We've been paddling for about an hour and 45 minutes, which is a lot longer than uh, you would think it was. An hour and 45 minutes of hard paddling. I think we've traveled about three miles against against the current. So we're this is uh, right near the tip of uh, Marco Island, which is the southwest tip of Marco Island. Dave's finally working his way up here, and. Uh, we're headed. We were headed to the dome homes, but it's actually five and a half miles away, and I'm not. I'm not sure if we're gonna. We're probably not gonna make it, but I'm trying to make the best of the day. It's been. Uh, the weather's been pretty good. When we landed on the first island to take a little breather, just sort of stretch our legs, it probably took I don't know, you know, 20 minutes to get across that little harbor, which I still don't know what the name of is. The the place we left from was called 
I think it's Caxum Bass's Park, Caxum Bass Park, something like that. And uh, for some reason, Wikipedia has it listed as Caxum Bass Islands too, but I don't think that's true. I'm sorry, I got distracted by some birds out in the water out there. So I shot a little bit of video and then we jumped back in the boat. So we were trying to make good time because we didn't want to be four hours up and four hours back because we'd both be exhausted. So anyway, we pack lunches and um, I tried to shoot a little bit of video. I had, I had like a, a camera on my hat, but I didn't have it pointed right. So the video is of like the sky. You can't even see the water because I didn't set that up good. And it was just, I was not in a good creative place. For some reason, my best creative uh, time is when I'm by myself a lot of times because I, I can just fully focus on what I want to say and what I'm doing and all that kind of stuff and when you're with another person you're sort of having a conversation with them as well as try to think of your storyline narrative and focus and I always have a lot of trouble shooting a video with somebody else sometimes it's, it's it makes it much more challenging but when you're by yourself there's nobody to talk to no distractions but anyway like I said, I was having just a, 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 a grumpy day. So anyway, we have a little bit of video of getting to the beach, and I shot some. I shot some video with my, um, it's, it's a Vivitar, like, waterproof camera. But the problem with that damn thing is you can't hear the volume. You can't hear the sound good. It doesn't record good because it's in a plastic waterproof case. So that video it's kind of useless and everything so we what happened was is we got halfway there and I told Dave I said um, I don't think I have the enough energy to get all the way so halfway there was about two and a half miles I think or two two and a quarter and like I said we were fighting the current and everything and it was just uh, it was hot out you know we weren't getting any break from any uh, clouds why is there 50 construction trucks coming by right now and I'm still in a little bit of a grouchy mood, if you can't hit up, tell. But I just wanted to sort of document this so um, I didn't waste the video. So we get halfway out there, and I just say, Dave, I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to make it back. I mean, it's going to be a five-mile paddle, five-mile-plus paddle back. We don't know if the conditions are going to change. We're going to get more. So unfortunately, we did not make it out to where the dome homes are at the tip of Cape Romano. And there was also, besides that, besides the dome homes, like I said, the, um, there was actually a, supposed to be the ruins of another house out there. I guess somebody built another house that you can see on the satellite photos. You can see like a little square house with a dock going out. And you can see, uh, if you go through Google Earth and you go back to like the 90s, and then you fast forward through the years, you can see how the dock has slowly just eroded. You can see like a little square house with a dock going out, and you can see... Uh, if you go through Google Earth and you go back to like the 90s and then you fast forward through the years, you can see how the dock has slowly just eroded. So what, what happened to the, this dome home deal is, is the guy built them and finished them in 82. I believe Hurricane Andrew came through in like 91 or 92 and damaged the homes. So he decided to sell those dome homes and leave them there. Because from what the pictures I saw and stuff, I guess, you know, there was, uh, you know, water damage and the windows got broken. Because Andrew was a huge storm, Category 5, I think. And it was like some ridiculous, uh, you know, record-setting winds. And it just, uh, you know. So as far as I know, um, structurally, the dome homes that were made out of solid concrete and they were dome-shaped to withstand the hurricane force winds were okay, but the windows were broken. And, it's it's not, it's unclear the exact amount of damage. <laughs> like every single diesel truck in the city is coming through here now. I don't know why. I guess they're doing construction around here somewhere. So what happened was is they they abandoned these dome homes and left them in whatever condition they were in. So just a, just a little couple things about the dome homes. They, they were created to be like solar powered and I think they had a generator there too and I think he had some kind of well system. So it was somewhat self-supported because it wasn't like they were gonna you know, run electricity. 
will run electricity to the homes. You know, because they were there's no bridges, there's no nothing. It's just an island, and um, it was considered like a sort of self-sufficient type of living. That was their idea, and I think it was a it was a vacation home too. I don't think they were living full time. So anyway, flash forward to 1999, a big storm came through and eroded a lot of the sand that had protected the house because at one point the house was way on shore. But after that big storm took all the sand out, the homes were virtually in the water. They were on big concrete posts. And if you look at the picture, you can kind of see that they were probably anchored in the ground. I don't know if it was like 10 feet, you know, into the ground. But so they became like this, uh, this weird uh, landmark thing that the homes were sitting in the water and they were just sticking up out of the water. So one day I was... Uh, going through some Google or somewhere and I just caught a snapshot of these houses and they look like kind of like these uh, things sticking out of the water with a dome on top and then they have windows all around so it looks a little bit like a spaceship and um, it looks super interesting and I started doing some research into it. This is probably about four, four months, five months ago, something like that. And I just thought that would be interesting to try to get out there. But at that time I did not have the idea of how remotely they were uh, positioned. Anyway. So that, that just kind of happened. We ended up coming back. We ate lunch in the boats because there was no beaches to land on on the way out there. And we gave it the college try. It just sort of didn't work out. So um, my thing is if I ever go back, I'd rather have a, you know, a, a powered boat rather than a kayak to get out there because, like I said, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, thing to get out there. But I'm not planning on going back anytime soon. It was interesting. We gave it a try. It was kind of a fail. Anyway, but I, you know, there are pictures out there. There are videos online that you can see. But um, it sort of always leaves a little bit of a, a bad taste in my mouth when I set off to go do something. Especially you spend, you know, two and a half hours driving there and you drive back and you kind of like a letdown. And I kind of pouted yesterday about it. And, um, you know, I took basically the whole day to do nothing. But, uh, get rested my shoulders were tired I was tired I don't kayak a lot so that was kind of dumb because I'm not in kayaking shape oh, there's a squirrel over there making noise besides the trucks there's squirrels we were trying to sabotage this video so that's kind of the story of the failure of the dome homes but hopefully with a little bit of video I showed you it kind of gives you a little bit of insight like I said there there are many many photos so they do have out on uh, Marco Island, they do have a lot of companies that rent boats to people. So that's part of their like eco tours where people tour those islands and they come around and they see the dome homes and it's become like a tourist fixture. But I didn't, I didn't have any knowledge of that. So we saw several jet, jet skiers going by and I'm thinking about an hour into it, I'm thinking, I wish we had rented jet skis, you know, but those, it's not cheap, you know, and I haven't got unlimited funds to go rent boats and stuff like that. So at some point when that becomes uh, a reality that I can go down there and, you know, get a boat and do it the way I want to do, I will probably do that. It's pretty, pretty neat out here. Look how clear the water is. It's like glass. But this is Sarasota Bay, so I would liken... Like, like I was talking about, I would liken it to if you were to um, kayak across the bay, you'd be fighting some waves, some wind, some current. It's a bit of a, it makes, it makes paddling just a bit, that lady's waving at me for some reason. It makes it a bit more challenging than if you say go five miles on a river, especially if you're with the current and you're doing it, it makes a huge difference. So me not being an, an Olympic paddler, but I hope you enjoyed the little pieces of video and the little pieces of photos that I could stick on here. So I just wanted to sort of document rather than just, Jesus, those people are loud. I just want to, boy, it stinks out here. Still, we're still dealing, dealing with some red tide in the area. And every, every, maybe, oh, maybe it's that garbage can with the maggots in it. Ew. There's maggots in this garbage can. What in the heck is that all about? I wonder if they uh, cleaned up the dead fish and put them all in that. Ugh, that. 
garbage can and then they didn't close the door because there's like a th whew, thousand magnets in there. That's probably what stinks. Is the fish in the garbage bags and the maggots. Sorry, that probably isn't a... But the like I said, the bay today is really calm out here. You can see how, how nice it is. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Just wanted to give you, rather than just, you know, all that time we spent doing that, rather than just throw that in the in the toilet. I wanted to share that. So I hope you guys are having a good week. I'm just uh, I'm just getting over pouting today and trying to have a good attitude and trying to get past my failure. So that's about that. You guys have a great day. And we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully I'll have more success in my next adventure. <laughs> See you guys later.